Hello viewers, welcome to my channel. I am Hashem Ali Khan. Last two videos I have completed the topic inventory control and stores management. In the last videos, two videos, I have explained you the meaning of the term inventory, what is the importance of inventory, decisions in inventory, and objectives of inventory control, benefits of inventory control, lead time. All these things I have already explained in the last two videos. Now in this video, again one more theory concept I am going to explain. That is replenishment of stock and the different stock levels. That, that is also very important from examination point. So in examination, not only problems, but also theory is very, very important. So have some patience, have some interest in learning the complete knowledge, not simply solving the problems. So if you have not watched the earlier videos, I suggest you go to the playlist of my channel, select the subject operations management, select the videos of inventory control and stores management, be perfect about the theoretical concepts, then we'll start the problems. So before proceeding ahead, take the screenshot of the points which I have written on the board, then I'll explain. Ha. So replenishment of stock. Material are received and issued by the storekeeper to different departments. One of the job of the storekeeper is to receive the material which is purchased from the supplier and issue the material to different departments which require material for production. So receiving and issuing, these are the main important functions of a storekeeper. One important duty of a storekeeper is to restocking of stores very important function of the storekeeper is restocking restocking means replenishment or repurchasing the stock which is exhausted when the material is finished or coming to an end so before coming to an end it has to be replenished that is called restocking of stores in order to efficient in order to ensure efficient functioning of the stores department and steady flow of material to the production department. The production department depends on material. So there should be smooth and continuous flow of material from the stores to production department. That's why uh, the storekeeper has to ensure that proper stock should always be maintained. If the stock is being exhausted, it should be replenished on time. That is restocking. The inflow and outflow of material has to be regulated in such a manner that neither the production is adversely affected due to the want of material nor is there unnecessary blocking of capital funds due to overstocking of material. Both are evils. That means if there is shortage of material, there is always a possibility that the production may be held up. The production may be interrupted. That is due to lack of material, shortage of material. That should not be done. That should not have the, the stores, the storekeeper should not face that situation. Secondly, there should not be overstocking of material. If there is overstocking of material, money will be blocked unnecessarily. And idle money will not generate any funds. It will incur cost, storage cost, capital, uh, interest charges obsolescence cost, number of costs will arise if there is overstocking. So here the storekeeper play a very important role in regulating, in regulating the inventory so that there should neither be shortage nor there should be excessive stock. This implied that there is always a limit to the minimum and maximum quantity of material of stock in the stores. Stores so many items of materials are there. So it will be better for the storekeeper to fix a limit, maximum limit, minimum limit, different types of limits has to be fixed. Then only he can be able to control the material. And the storekeeper is to requisition stock for replenishment in time. That means whenever the stock is exhausted, he has to make a requisition to the purchasing department that this day material has to be purchased. On the basis of this requisition, the purchase manager will initiate for uh, initiate for purchasing that item of material. 
replenishment of stock therefore implies as taking steps for the fresh purchase of those stocks which has been exhausted and for which requisitions are to be given. So replenishment means it's an act of the storekeeper to initiate the repurchase of that item of material which is exhausted by making a requisition and sending the requisition to the purchasing department. This is called replenishment of stock. Now stock levels. In order to control the inventory, different levels will be fixed for every item of inventory. Every item of material, different levels will be fixed. Because by fixing these levels, the storekeeper can be able to control, can be able to manage. That means these levels will tell the storekeeper what should be the maximum inventory, what should be the minimum inventory, what should be the average inventory, what is the reordering level. All this information the storekeeper can be able to get by fixing the stock levels. Two main objective of stores control, stock control system is to maintain sufficient stock in order to avoid shortage which can disrupt production and sales. Two main objectives are there why inventory should be controlled, why stock should be controlled. The first to maintain sufficient stock so that there should not be any shortage of material due to which there is a possibility of disruption of the production as well as sales. If material is not obtained on time, there is a possibility production will be held up, stopped. In that case, we cannot be able to deliver the goods on time to the customers. Our sales will be affected, our production will be affected due to shortage of material. Secondly, to avoid high cost of holding excessive stock levels. Keeping excessive stock will incur a number of costs. Rental charges will increase, insurance charges will increase, apart from that interest on money blocked, apart from that obsolescence, deterioration, all these are the costs which, are, which is related to excessive holding of stock. That should not be done. So th uh, there should not be shortage of inventory, nor there should be any excessive inventory. So to overcome these two situations, no shortage, no excessive. A stock level which strikes a balance between these two objectives should result in inventory cost being minimized. So a balance should be maintained, neither shortage nor excessive. A balance. So that balance of inventory should be maintained at which the inventory cost will be minimum. Ultimate objective of the business is minimum investment should be made in inventory. Minimum investment. And both these evils should be avoided. Fixing of certain, certain level of each item of material is one such technique. That means for every item of material, some levels have to be fixed. And all these levels will be written in a card called bin card. That bin card will be hanged on the rack where each item of inventory is kept. On that bin card, different levels are stated. Now the following levels are generally fixed. The levels are maximum level, minimum level, reorder level, one more average stock level, danger level. These are the different types of levels which are fixed for every item of inventory. And it is written on the bin card which is hanged on the racks of each item of material. The first <coughs> maximum level. The maximum stock level indicates the maximum quantity of an item of metal which can be held in stock at any time. So what is the maximum quantity of material that can be kept at any time? Maximum level. That means the inventory should not go beyond that level, beyond that maximum level. If the inventory goes beyond that maximum level, it means there is overstocking. There is overstocking and overstocking leads to a higher inventory cost. Our objective is not to increase the cost, we have to decrease the cost, minimize the cost. So overstocking should not be there. When overstocking, if the inventory is more than maximum stock level. The maximum stock level is the highest level of quantity of metal beyond which it should not be allowed to go. 
Now it represents the quantity above which stock or an item should not be allowed to be kept. It is asserted as follows. What is the formula to calculate maximum stock level? In the coming videos, when we do the problem, the problem may be asked regarding calculate the maximum stock level, minimum stock level, average stock level, reorder level like that. So these formulas you have to remember. Maximum stock level is equal to reordering level plus reordering quantity minus minimum usage into minimum reorder period. This is the formula to calculate maximum stock level. Now minimum stock level. The minimum stock level is the lowest level below which the inventory should not fall. If the inventory fall below the minimum stock level, that there is always a danger of shortage or production will be stopped or delivery of goods cannot be made on time. So the inventory should not be allowed to fall below the minimum stock level. So minimum level represents the quantity below which the inventory of any item should not be allowed to fall. And in other words, a business must maintain minimum quantity of stock so that production is not hampered due to non-availability of material. Should not be allowed to fall below the minimum. Otherwise, what will happen? The production will get hampered. The production will get interrupted. So it is ascertained by the following formula. What is the formula for minimum stock level? Reordering level minus normal usage into normal reorder period. So three items are required to calculate minimum stock level. That is reordering level we need, normal usage and normal reorder period. Now comes to reordering level. Reordering level is that level whenever inventory reaches this reordering level, replenishment requisition has to be made by the storekeeper. That means whenever, example I'll give you. In an item of material, suppose the maximum stock is, let it be 800 units. Minimum stock is 200 units. Minimum stock 200. The inventory should not fall below 200 units. Maximum 800. The inventory should not go beyond 800. And the reordering level is 400 units. That means whenever inventory reaches 400 units, the storekeeper has to make a requisition for replenishment of that item of inventory because it has reached 400 units 400 units it has reached the so reordering level it is a level of stock of material at which further supplies must be ordered that means the requisition for replenishment should be made whenever inventory reaches reorder level it is asserted by applying the following formula reordering level is equal to maximum consumption into maximum reorder period or one more formula is there for calculating reordering level that is minimum level plus consumption during lead time lead time means the time gap between placing the order and receiving the goods this concept i have already explained in the last video so two formulas are there for calculating reordering level the first formula maximum usage into maximum reorder period second formula minimum level plus consumption during lead time so it depends on the information given in the problem so whatever information is given we can apply any formula to get reordering level next is average stock level so this stock level indicates the average stock held by the concern that means on an average how much inventory normally on an average a business is holding that inventory is called average inventory so average inventory we can get by using this formula minimum stock level plus half of reorder quantity minimum stock level plus half of reorder quantity this is the formula for average stock level next is danger stock level danger stock level is a level which is below the minimum stock level suppose the minimum stock level is 200 units so below 200 100 units will be marked as danger level that means when the inventory reaches suppose 100 units emergency steps must be taken to replenish the stock because the level has reached in at such a, such a stage that at any time production will be stopped so in that case emergency action should be taken to replenish the stock 
So it is a fixed below minimum stock level. The danger level of stock indicates emergency of stock position and urgency of obtaining fresh supply at any cost. Even if we are getting at a higher price, we have to purchase the material because the inventory has reached at such stage where there, there is always a possibility of production stoppage. Now, it is calculated. So what is the formula for danger level? Average rate of consumption into emergency delivery time. Average rate of consumption. Example, the average rate of consumption is 10 units per day. And the emergency period required is 2 days. 2 days emergency period we need. So 10 units into 2 days. 20 units will be the danger level. That's it. Now last topic in this video is safety stock or buffer stock. This concept very frequently will be asked in theory question in examination. So briefly I will explain you. In real life situation, uh, the firms operate under conditions of uncertainty relating to both demand as well as procurement time. See, inventory depends on the consumption rate, at what rate the materials are used in production. And secondly, what is the procurement time, lead time. On the basis of these two, that means consumption rate and also procurement time we decide all the different levels but are we sure that the rate of consumption and the procurement time both are fixed it will not change no there is uncertainty sometimes there may be delay in the procurement of material sometimes the requirement of material will be fast in that case there is always uncertainty attached with both consumption of the material and also procurement time to meet that uncertainties some extra some minimum quantity of material will be kept aside to meet those uncertain situations to meet an emergency situation and that separate quantity of material kept to meet the uncertainty is called buffer stock or safety stock <clears throat> Total actual demand may be more or less than the forecasted demand. Whatever we expected the demand of material, the demand of material may be more than forecasted. Example, we expect that every day 10 units of material are required. But during a particular period, the material requirement has been 12 units. Instead of 10, 12 units, more consumption. Similarly, the actual procurement time may vary from the estimated time, the lead time. We expect that the normally lead time will be one week, but nowadays it is taking 10 days. More time it is required to get to the material. So there is uncertainty in both. So in order to minimize the effect of uncertainty in demand, a, level, a firm maintains safety stock to combat the situation of uncertainty of usage of material and procurement time. Some extra material will be kept separately. That extra material which is kept separately to face the uncertainty is called safety stock. The safety stock may be defined as the minimum additional inventory uh, to serve as safety margin or cushion to meet an unanticipated increase in usage resulting from uncertainties. So some minimum quantity of additional material which is kept separately to face the uncertain, uncertain situation of more consumption that extra material kept separately is called safety stock that's all so in this video i have explained you the meaning of the term replenishment of stock and the different stock levels so inshallah we'll continue our next topic in the next video